Did you remember to spring forward this weekend and set your clocks ahead for daylight savings time? Well, that meant we all lost one hour of sleep. Regular contributor Dr. Will Clower says losing that sleep affects our minds and bodies in a bad way, but we can fix it. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, sleep. Oh, I love sleep. <laughs> yes, I know. And uh, we all lost an hour. And what a lot of us don't realize is that uh, it has consequences for our mind and our brain, especially as we get older. Really? And so what's actually going on in the in the mind with right. sleep? When you when you sleep, it's funny because the American Academy of Sleep Medicine defines four different sleep st uh, stages. Okay. The first is REM. That's when you're uh, you have rapid eye movement mm -hmm. and you're more likely to dream. Uh -huh. Below that are deeper and deeper levels of sleep. When huh. you are a child, those levels are deeper and broader. That's wow. why children are like out Hard and you and I, yeah. yeah, exactly. As we get older, those sleep cycles get, the troughs get narrower and it more frequently you're at the top, which mm. means you're more likely to wake up and get more disturbed sleep as you, I mean, you're still young, right? But and when you get old and, and crusty <laughs> like me, then you're more likely to wake up in the middle of the night. Yeah. And that has consequences for your at work behavior, for your mind and your brain. So you're not getting as restful of a sleep. That's exactly right. That's okay. what happens. So what other consequences can you have if you really have sleep deprivation? Uh, Christine, it is like a biological train wreck. So wow. a lot of things are happening when you don't get a good, uh, good night's sleep. You are more likely to get sick. Your immune system is compromised. Hmm. Your body takes lack of sleep as a stressor. It puts cortisol, a stress hormone, into your body, which creates blood sugar chronically inside your body, which can lead to things like uh, insulin insensitivity, aka diabetes. Mm. It can uh, in impact fat storage so that you're more likely to get a higher BMI. Wow. You are more likely to have munchies through the day, so you eat more. Wow. And weight gain, basically. Yeah, like weight gain, yeah. exactly. And you're also uh, less likely, likely to think well. Oh my There's goodness. There's some incredible studies showing that your ability to think, to attend, to remember is degraded even with just modest uh, declines in sleep. And for those people who aren't thinking as well, they'll ask them, are you, are you more sleepy, more or less sleepy than normal? And they'll say no, they don't even notice it. So they're not associating their mental problems exactly. with that. Even heart problems you can have with sleep? Yeah, exactly. Higher blood pressure as well. You get um, irregular heartbeats from not getting a, enough sleep at night. And how, so if people aren't recognizing they're not getting enough, how do they know it's not enough? Is there an X certain number everyone should get? You need about six to eight. As an adult, mm -hmm. you need about six to eight hours of sleep per night. And basically, the, the guidelines are really loose. Uh, yeah, the, it's pretty wide range. Yeah, there. and they'll say, uh, look, if you go through the day and you don't feel sleepy, then that's the amount you need to get. Hmm. So that's, that's basically the... So uh, um, the guidelines. If you're having some of those health problems, though, that could be a sign. That yeah, exactly. An uh, early warning sign. Okay, That's right. well, let's talk about some of the solutions. Well, you know, there's a lot, there's some myths and some uh, facts. Well, let's just talk about drinks. So, okay. obviously, don't have uh, caffeinated drinks close okay. to the end. So, you can just leave those off uh, three to four hours before oh, you wow. go to sleep. And then, there's even if you're able to fall asleep, can it prevent you from having a deeper sleep? Um, yes, and especially in the early portion mm -hmm. of sleep. Mm -hmm. But, you know, something that people will say is, uh, if I have a, a glass of wine, it makes me tired, right? right? So I should have wine before I go to bed. However, alcohol acts in the same way as barbiturates do, in that they will depress REM sleep. Huh. I was talking to uh, Dr. Michael Lacey, who founded a sleep institute around Atlanta, mm -hmm. about this, and he said there's a rebound effect that happens with alcohol. So mm. if you have alcohol before you go to sleep, it takes about four hours to wash through, and then you pop out of sleep. Oh, wow. So if you have a couple of glasses of wine before you go to bed, by 2.30, boom, you're wow. awake, and you're awake for a long time. Interesting. So it ends up working in the reverse, yeah. alcohol wow. does. What about milk? You think of milk and cookies before bed? You know what's funny about milk? Milk has tryptophan, and tryptophan is a precursor to a sleep hormone in your body called serotonin. Huh. And so people will say have foods and drinks that have tryptophan in them because it helps you sleep at night. When I talked to Dr. Lacey about this specifically, mm -hmm. he said his observation is that that's absolutely true, but there's just no clinical trials wow. yet on it. So your mother was kind of right about the warm milk thing. Yeah. It works. Okay. And real quick, uh, what about exercise? 
Uh, don't, don't exercise more than a few hours, two to three hours before bed, just because it revs up your metabolism mm -hmm. and makes it harder to go to sleep. So getting exercise is key to getting a good night's sleep, but not right up before you go to bed. Okay, great advice. Well, Absolutely, thank you, thank so you. Much. good to see you. Dr. Will Clower of Mediterranean Wellness, and you can look for his advice on healthy living online. We have a link posted for you at kdka.com slash PTL.